join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him. Or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey for the ultimate shot. Hello, I'm Archie Nesbitt, and you are watching The Snake Eater. Sorry, that was a joke. You are again with The Ultimate Shot, and this is just an ordinary, young, four-meter python. This snake is not poisonous, and we could say that it is even harmless to man, if it were not for the danger of the gangrene caused by its bite. We had to remove the snake from the road to be able to continue on with our Toyota. Harmless, right. After our quick photo session with the cold-blooded supermodel, we removed her from the road and continued on our hunting adventure. We were in Mozambique again. Leo had brought us to Mozambique, purely and simply a bow hunter's paradise. The animals were not spooky, and for about 10 years, their repopulation has been strictly managed. We will hunt antelope with my new experimental bear attack bow. We managed to scare the antelope that were grazing at about 100 meters from us, but we continued our hunting approach through the dried vegetation. Finally, we were able to stalk some reed buck, and I had the chance to shoot from about 70 meters. The telltale traces on my arrow told me that the animal was not far. Thank you very much. Well done. Like I said, there's more reed buck than impala. But very good shooting there, I That was 70 yards. This is a trap for a giant forest rat. Um, the locals. This is his burrow behind Archie there. And uh, what a neat, neat mechanism that they've got here. They uh, bait him inside here. And that's the trigger mechanism with uh, ivory palm seed, the coconuts out of it. But. Uh, that's the bait. <laughs> Try some of that one. Excellent, just hold it, it will run. Drinkable water is a rare thing in the African bush, and any opportunity to save our reserves was welcome. That's great, yeah. Leo, uh, in the background here, we have Jaquim coming with two poachers of sorts, two guys with their dogs, and they've got a a, ra a ra couple of rats? Cane rats. Yeah. Cane rats. Yeah, it's just locals. It's not, not the, our major problem out here. But, uh, yeah, when we started here in 94, um, most, of the, uh, most of the animals here were depleted. And uh, since then, we've got a group of, of 25 anti-poaching guys running. Uh, All local guys? 12 months of the year, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, it's been working so far. Just just one example is our sable population that when we started here, yeah, there were just over 200. Last count, November last year, we're looking at a population of nearly 2,000. Yeah, so but yeah, perfect example again. Where there's hunting, 
There's animals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But we'll see what these guys, it looks like if they've got cane rats with them. It's, uh, like I said, local people, not no. not majorly yeah. commercial poaching. Right. So. It's a little, little, little cat male, eh? Coming up. This animal is snared. That's the drag. And now it's hooked up. Would have died here. But they could have followed. Look at the length of that. That's why. This is why there's uh, anti-poaching efforts here. Amba. Amba. It's probably got white muscle disease. No. White muscle disease. I would like to put this around them. Well, this animal is under tremendous stress. It's, you know, it, Leo thinks it might have white muscle disease. And, you know, maybe so weak and be careful to them. It wanted to lunge at the boys, so I mean, it's just under, it's dehydrated. It's dragged this thing for we don't know how long. Obviously, they know it, it gets wrapped up and hooked, and then it just, it gets caught and it can't go anywhere. That's why we need people like WWF to do something when we ask. They just talk and they do nothing. Yeah. And I'll say that open. Yeah. Well, we Nine. just left the elephant Nine. track about a mile back and we're heading for the closest road. Wow. And, uh, Is this legal what he's doing? No, not at all. I mean, he's but like, like I said, you know, we, we're fighting a losing battle with the local authorities. This is probably four or five nyala carcasses yeah, that's been dried. That's crazy. The local authorities, you know, you send them to the cop station two days and they back. It's just an ongoing battle and we're subsidizing all this anti-poaching units ourselves. No, but we've got no help from nobody. And, uh, the poachers the in Mozambique managed to exterminate a great part of the game, this ruining the chance of thousands of people to earn their living from the hunting licenses sold by the government and in any case to still get the meat free. The politicians in Mozambique, brought to bay by the green organizations, that through economic sanctions applied to the countries in the region were forced to restrict hunting. Thus, with no real economic help, the local populations killed for meat some 60% of the wild animal population. The theory of the enchanted circle is proven. Every prohibition to hunt some species without the necessary economical support leads to its decrease and possible extinction where the opposite position and a well-managed income from hunting licenses could restore the population of almost extinct species and better the economic situation for the, all of the local people. Despite the good prospects for the country's future after the approval of foreign hunting licenses, hunger was still a problem everywhere and we had to provide meat for our camp and for the local people. During my hunting journeys in Africa, every time when I have the opportunity, I try to help the local people with subsistence, providing meat for our hosts. We were stalking the next warthog, slinking through the tall grass, yellow from the sun, but we had not noticed the orvi, which suddenly jumped out of the bush nearby. It watched curiously the unusual creatures sneaking through the bush. This was an ideal opportunity to try my luck. 
just as I expected, the antelope, in a flash of a second, jumped the arrow as it flew to it, and in three jumps, it disappeared into the bush. With the advance of the day, it became hotter and hotter. The constant gusts of wind made the heat unbearable. We went against the wind to examine a couple of trees on the burnt plain. We passed through the interwoven thorny bush in the only way possible, on all fours. The curious eyes of a hartebeest met us on the other side. With its sharp eyesight, he had noticed how he appeared from underneath the brush. Lichtenstein's hartebeest are famous for their great eyesight and also for their bad sense of smell, a statement which I think is not quite true. I'm not set to shoot that far now. The wild animal's curiosity was still keeping so it fixed on our presence. It was not moving a muscle, so I decided to approach it. The tall grass covered us well, and we quickly shortened the distance. The big antelope felt something was now wrong and started going nervously in circles. Maybe this was the herd bull who thought we were competition. Looking from the corner of our eyes, and not making direct eye contact, Leo and I moved in sync, possibly reminding the hartebeest of some four-legged creature. The shot was not easy. The tall grass that helped us come close to the animal now saved it from us. I was not disappointed because it was early in the hunt and we had more days to find a mature bull. This time we were prepared for the meeting and calmly approached the hartebeest under the cover of the camel sheet, stretched out in front of us like a shield. That hard abuse is dying. It is. It's it. Really? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Archie, a great show. Well, I had to shoot through these this brush here and I Just I got a bit of a deflection. I got a bit of a deflection and it shot the arrow was a little bit to the left but it sunk in. Not in the car. Do you think he fell over? That what the beast is going down. He's falling and getting up and falling and getting up. No. Well, here's the bear archery. <laughs> Thanks Leo again. <laughs> we've only been here a few days and we've got eight great trophies. But we're that still after a, our big two, so. That was a mechanical. It was. This will be a tremendous trophy if we if we get this, because uh, this is a unique heart of beast. I've never seen one like it before. And uh, for everybody watching this, this area is a mecca. This is untouched, unspoiled, virgin country. We've been making our own roads. Not long, because you, you got these big clearings, but we're making roads through the cover to get to new areas, to explore new areas. This is a very unique place in Africa because it's uh, really tremendous wildlife populations. And it's just a spectacular hunting. And the game is not wild and spooked. And there aren't that many local people. There's only a few small villages and they're scattered as a poaching, but you know, poaching, these people are living off the land. The problem is when they get commercial and they utilize and take too much game and they get too selfish. The meat here goes to all these people, doesn't, doesn't go home with us and we don't eat too much. So there's a benefit for everybody when you come over here and hunt. And as long as we keep coming here and hunting, this wildlife will be preserved for sure. Oh, that's really dark red blood. Look yeah, at that. That's excellent. That's great that's blood. blood. Yeah, let's just see. Yeah. That trophy ridge expandable broadhead. Look at that heavy, heavy, heavy clotted blood. That's a really a big time. Okay, let's follow the blood trail. Let's go see where he is. Well 
Leo, uh, we've been here five days. I think uh, this is our eighth animal. For me, there's seven species uh, I've never taken before. This heart of beast is a special heart of beast uh, found in a small area of Africa. Tell us about this species. Yeah, this is the Liechtenstein heart of beast, and uh, they occur in Zambia, Malawi, Mozambique and the most southern point of Tanzania. Very unique animal. It's got a heart-shaped uh, set of, of horns. Uh, these bulls are quite a bit more muscular than the cows. And we found this old guy out by himself this morning and uh, like you can see, the trick worked. <laughs> it did work. Now he's a big old bull and he's still got his, he's not broomed on the ends. A little bit maybe, but he's a, he's a, a good look, I mean, a, a, a great trophy? Or, yeah, yeah, no, this is a very, very good trophy. Length-wise, heaviness, I mean, this bull's just got everything. Uh, he's worked on his tips a little bit, you know, looking at about a quarter of an inch that you, we lost there, but uh, other than that, just beautiful. Yeah. Well, well done you. again. Thank you. I guess we'll, <laughs> we'll start looking for elephants again. We continue our worldwide hunting adventures in our search for the ultimate shot. And for this episode, we are taking you to South Africa, Cape to Karoo, in the quest of big trophies of several kinds of antelope, which can only be found here. I cannot leave out indefinitely my encounter with the rhinoceros, such a unique animal without which the idea of Africa would be unthinkable. I am happy that we could stalk and approach it to film it from a close distance. But I was even happier when we did the same for a red hartebeest. The shot was from a long distance, and I was not 100% sure of the result. But Leo saved me the worries when he showed me the animal lying down on the ground some 50 to 60 meters away from us. And uh, second night we've sat over orange peels. It's uh, 4.30, 3.30, the first out, the first coup have started coming in. The extremely beautiful horns of the kudu quite often are the reasons for its death during the battles for supremacy between the bulls during the mating season. Intertwining, these horns condemn them to die of hunger and thirst when they are locked up. There's only four entries in the record book, in the SCI record book. It's just a beautiful little animal. It's a East Cape Gray's Buck. And you can see he's an old timer. He's got part of one ear missing and very mature male. Beautiful silver hair through his body and uh, make a great mount. This morning we got into the blind and uh, there's a water hole here and uh, we got a little bit of feed out here because it's midwinter and an uh, hour and a half after we're in we see a great red lechway coming to the blind. We're hunting these red lechway and less buck and also um, springbok here in the Karoo in central South Africa. This is our first trophy on a week-long hunt here. So stay tuned and uh, see what action unfolds as we hunt this beautiful paradise here in central South Africa. This is our black the springbuck set up here and we can see anything. Black wildebeest, eland, fallow deer. We sat silent in the dark blind, hearing only the long drawn out howl of the water pump. Notwithstanding how unbearable this sound was for us, 
it was clear that the animals were familiar with it and knew that along with it came the water, life important for their survival. Soon Leo spotted a scimitar oryx approaching, seduced by the green alfalfa we had brought. Hit him really well. It's a scimitar orcs here in Central South Africa. This great scimitar oryx came in about three o'clock. We'd only set up about 1:30. Set up a pop-up blind near a water hole uh, where it had never been before, but the cover was really good. And he came in within an hour. We've got about six more species to hunt, so stay tuned and uh, see what's next on The Ultimate Shot. In our next episode of The Ultimate Shot, prepare yourselves to witness a truly historic event. In the thick forests of the highlands of Ethiopia, you will see how, for the very first time in the world, a hunter succeeds in taking an African trophy of trophies, the Mountain Nyala. We will share with you the difficult treks, the mud and the pouring rains, and the great luck of our committed team when undetected, we invade the home of one of the biggest Danyala ever taken by a hunter. Stay with me to see this unique and historic ultimate shot.